relationships are interesting things. As we age and gain more experience, what we look for in another person definitely evolves. When I first played Catherine back in 2011, I found myself erring more on the side of free-spirited blonde Catherine as opposed to frumpy fun police Catherine. But after years of trial and error since then, I found it's not so easy to build a life with a manic pixie dream girl and that the fun police usually just have your best interest in mind. I mean, ideally we want some combination of the two, but if you're looking for a nuanced take on uh, relationships, <laughs> you've come to the wrong channel. Anyway, now Atlas has opened her eyes to a third flavor of a romantic partner to consider. Codependent amnesiac, anyone? Nah, it's a trap. Our story centers around Vincent, a 31-year-old man-child who, despite being in a long-term relationship and having just begun a swanky new tech industry career, finds himself demonstrably unengaged and melancholy, or as us millennials like to call it, living the dream. Vincent's long-term girlfriend, Catherine with a K, is a pragmatic, if not slightly controlling woman who values structure and security. Sentiments echoed by her recent threat to the status quo of their relationship by suggesting that the pair get married. Vincent responds in the way that anyone who lived through the 2008 depression ought to. A frightened pale stare while breaking into a cold sweat. Ah, emotional stability. I remember it like it was. <laughs> While in a less than sober state one night, Vincent is descended upon by Catherine. Now, that is Catherine with a C, not to be confused with Catherine with a K, which you will, of course, do. C is in chlamydia, Catherine shares Vincent's free-spirited sensibilities, insisting that people don't belong to one another and that adults should be free to do as and who they please. Despite Vincent talking a big freedom game, he is... Let's call it visibly distressed when he wakes up with Catherine the next morning. Thus begins a wonderful sequence of events that Vincent could easily talk himself out of if only he could just spit it the f out. This time around, our story begins with our boy Vincent wandering the infamously vacant streets of Tokyo, where he runs into and subsequently has his face sat on by the pink haired Dean. Nin, who was running from some frightening, nondescript shadow creature alluding to elements of the game not present in the original, expresses her gratitude to Vincent for... saving her? I guess? But it turns out she also needs a little help with, uh, like, everything. You know, getting an apartment, a job, a cell phone, like, everything. Typical millennial, am I right? <laughs> help me, I'm dying inside! Despite Vincent living the dream with the rest of us, he is somehow able to set Dean up with all these things in no time flat. Right, right, hang on, wanna know what? I can buy that Vincent had the hookup for the job and the apartment next door and that he could even get it all done in just a night or two. But wanna know what I can't buy? The grand piano in Rin's one room Japanese apartment. What they do construct the building around it? Okay, massive spoiler alert, except this shouldn't be a spoiler at all when looking at the names of the other two love interests. When giving Lin her cell phone, it is revealed that Lin is actually short for Catherine. With a Q. Q as in quesadilla, Catherine. The fact that Vincent didn't get her a job at a Taco Bell is f***ing criminal. Well, if he had, the game's bathroom wouldn't be quite so vacant. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Not helping our poor boy's situation, Vincent has recently been plagued by a recurring nightmare in which he sees himself climbing a seemingly endless staircase that, if he falls from, he'll die in real life. While he doesn't have any memory of these dreams while awake, he hasn't been sleeping well and stays out late drinking in an attempt to postpone the nightmares to come. Catherine Fullbody essentially reorganizes the story from the ground up integrating our third Catherine. I won't dare spoil any of the specifics, but what I will say is that she and all of her story elements are blended in so naturally and consistently that I found it hard to believe that she wasn't there in the first place. I'm talking new cutscenes, 
extensions of previously existing cutscenes, numerous dialogue exchanges between Catherine and the existing cast, and so many other little touches. But the additions I found serve the story best are the new flashback cutscenes and text messages from Catherine. In the original, Catherine was portrayed as an overbearing control freak who Vincent was almost certainly unhappy with. I always got the feeling I was going with her because it was the good thing to do. This time around, we get some nice glimpses at their early relationship in addition to several new or overhauled texts and conversations that show Catherine making more of an effort to keep up the romance. This not only paints Catherine in a much more favorable light, but it also gives us an inclination about why Vincent just might be better off staying with her. Massive improvement. I want to take a moment to point out that Catherine is, without a doubt, a mature game. And that's not due to over-the-top violence or sexually suggestive themes, although one of the bosses is a nightmarish amalgamation of sexy lady parts that tries to eat you with what would be its butthole. So it's also not not because of the violence and sexual themes, but what I'm talking about are the interpersonal problems Vincent is faced with. I might be alone on this, but I would rather fight 1,000 cornhole colossi in my nightmares than wake up in bed with some rando I have no memory of taking home. I mean, did I consent to this? Did we use protection? Could I still have genital warts regardless? Is it a moot point because Akemi's gonna fucking murder me? That is the real nightmare fuel. As with publisher Atlas's other titles, Full Body divides its gameplay into two separate yet equally important sections, Slice of Life Graphic Novel and Supernatural Horror Puzzler. Vincent's time awake is spent at the bar where you can engage in a litany of activities such as talking to friends, talking to strangers, the staff, Din, who is now also staff, and um, it's uh, it's mostly talking. Litany is too grand a word. Put elsewhere. But the litany of conversations you engage in are all really well written, making getting to know each of these characters one of my favorite parts of the game. <laughs> and it's a good thing too, because Vincent is not the only one having deadly nightmares. Many of the bar's other patrons share in Vincent's affliction, and failure to interact with and encourage them will no doubt lead to their untimely death. Additionally, you receive various texts from Vincent's... How many love interests does it take to make a harem? Wanna know what? Good for him. You receive various texts from Vincent's harem. How you reply to them affects his internal dialogue and how he acts in some specific cutscenes. Your responses can also land you a little fan service that's sure to get me demonetized. Catherine is certainly not shy about showing a little skin in her selfies, so much so that Vincent wouldn't be caught dead gawking at him in public. You gotta retreat to the bathroom if you want to get a good look. Real glad we're not in a Mexican restaurant right about now. You were trying to rub one out in a Taco Bell bathroom. A refreshing addition is that you now receive On This Day X Years Ago style messages featuring old pics from Catherine. They don't get quite as uh, avant-garde as Catherine's, but they certainly help to further flesh out the relationship hearing Vincent reminisce to himself when opening it. I'm sure this isn't news to most of you, but drinking until you can hardly walk straight is very important for you to do in this game in no other time. Each beverage you drink will give Vincent a speed boost during his nightmares. Now, I know this is just a game mechanic, but my headcanon is that he can move faster in the dream because he's rushing to the end so he can wake up and take that coveted 5 a.m. 60 second piss. Oh, man. If you know, you know. You want to make sure you get in at least three drinks to maximize this effect. While they're all fundamentally the same, there are four different types of alcohol to choose from. Rum and Coke, beer, sake, and the newly added wine. Each time you finish a drink, not only does it add to your level of intoxication, but it gives you an interesting factoid about the beverage. Just wish one of those facts was not to cross grape with grain. No wonder Vincent's plagued with deathly nightmares. You try lacing a few beers with red wine and then tell me you didn't spend that night on the verge of a scatologically induced death.
Catherine Full Body is ultimately a block puzzle game. You'll spend the majority of your time arranging various types of blocks in such ways that allow you to ascend the staircase out of proverbial hell. The mechanics are misleadingly simple, concealing a controller-smashingly difficult learning curve that some may find off-putting. That being said, the game does an excellent job of teaching you to recognize the progressively more complex patterns in the walls. But understanding what you need to do and actually executing it, especially on the higher difficulties, can reach borderline masochistic levels of difficulty. All the clear-cut masochism can be found in the game's aesthetic. The end of each night is capped off with a boss fight. Well, a, a boss escape? Not gonna lie, not a lot Vincent can do in his underwear to fend off a five-story demon baby. These are basically just regular stages with the intensity ramped up and a few extra threat elements added. But what I love most about these bosses is that they're all exaggerated manifestations of Vincent's insecurities and turmoils. And the way they're introduced is just so memorable to me. Some almost mechanically calm woman's voice warns you of the boss by saying something like, Doom's Bride has appeared. It's the killer. Do not die. Doing a really good job of calming me down here, lady. Wait, Doom's Bride? Well, that's a healthy relationship. Are all the boss names this blunt? How about Child with Chainsaw? What is this one even representing? I, I, I don't want to look it up. I'm afraid. Full Body has received some noticeable improvements from the first installment. For example, when going behind a row of blocks, the camera will now rotate 180 degrees so that you can actually see what you're doing and the controls no longer reverse. Additionally, when you set up an edge, which you will do a lot and the game will never fail to remind you about it, A bright blue line will trace across the now traversable area of the edge. It's a small improvement, but it does wonders in making your position within the puzzle much clearer. On top of all of this, they added an extra play mode introducing large, solid blocks in fixed shapes. If you've already played Catherine, I recommend starting full body on this mode, as it really does a lot to shake up the puzzle formula. Breaking up the puzzle elements are safe havens. These sections allow you to take a moment to relax, learn a new climbing technique or two, and check on your sheep friends. Which, just like in the bar, you will need to do lest they fall into despair and die. So relaxing. The biggest update to these sections is the addition of Catherine. She has completely changed the mood of the safe havens from the original, her piano providing a light, soothing melody in place of the original's tense, ominous background music. Catherine can also aid you with her song while climbing, but I don't have any footage of that because I'm a friggin' champion and never got that close to the bottom. <laughs> when leaving the safe havens, you're met with these interesting relationship quizzes. They seem innocuous enough at first, tossing these softball questions like, uh, do you think it's okay to cheat? But the deeper into the game you go, the more difficult the questions can become. These, along with your text conversations and a number of other interactions in the game, place you on the order and freedom spectrum. This is less of a good and evil morality system and more of your philosophical view of relationships. Or more realistically, it's the gauge that indicates how close you are to getting your desired ending. And trust me, as a guy who got all the endings in the OG Catherine, it's best to pick a lane and stick with it. Just like real life, doing something only halfway usually leads to disappointment. Speaking of not doing things halfway, it's time to shill. Please! Subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is like the 20th take and my palms are getting really red. And if it's not too much of an inconvenience, I'm gonna ask that you click the little bell icon because subscriptions don't seem to mean much anymore.
And my final request is that you consider checking out my Patreon. I want to thank Sean Van Pelt for all the support over the year and change. You're a champion, my friend. Thank you. Seppuku through diabetes. In for a long hoe. A long road to hoe. In for a long road to hoe! Catherine's visual style is kind of proto Persona 5. That is to say, it's breathtaking, and I have nothing bad to say about it. While it doesn't carry all of P5's outstanding visual flourishes, you could pop the stray sheep and all of its inhabitants directly into P5's Shibuya, and nothing would seem amiss. Vincent's waking hours and relatively tame urban Japan control- Um, excuse me? This game takes place in an unnamed city in North America? Get your facts straight, Caleb! Okay, so ignoring the fact that the apartments are clearly Japanese, and that there are cultural dynamics present such as senpai and kohai, and the fact that the cast eats at a conveyor belt sushi restaurant and are all able to order room temperature sake from a ceramic bottle at a fucking dive bar, there is one telltale giveaway that this is Japan. No American would have to be repeatedly- Oof, cracked my voice, jeez. No American would have to be repeatedly reminded by anyone to eat his cake. 10 out of 10 does not take place in America. Ah, where was I? Ah, right. Urban Japan contrasts with the stark gothic motif drawn through each level of Vincent's nightmares. These settings range from grotesque and bloody torture chambers to awe-inspiring Sistine Chapel-esque places of worship. The ever-increasing beauty of the stages truly does create the feeling that you're climbing out of hell into paradise. The character design holds up nicely. I bought a beige leather jacket back in 2011 just because of Vincent, and it, along with the game's art direction, are still amazing in 2019. Additionally, Catherine, despite her bubblegum pink hair, blends in with the rest of the cast perfectly. Not gonna lie, had my concerns when I first got a look at her, but again, she feels like she always should have been there. The audio design is equally well executed. The music always sets the correct tone and the voice actors deliver some quality performances. But it's the subtle touches that really send it over the top. Things like the aforementioned unsettlingly calm announcement of bosses juxtaposing the franticness to come or opening a text message to a distinct vocal cue from the corresponding Catherine. Just brilliant, subtle additions like these that a lesser game might have overlooked really set it apart. Full Body is not some lazy upreds. Substantial amounts of new content have been added throughout the game, including the aforementioned new and extended cutscenes, tons of new photos from each of the three girls, and a jukebox full of fresh tunes. I mean, fresh as in like, uh, as in new, not like cool, but... Well, I say it's not just an up-res, but that's not entirely true. The key models and locations look awesome, but some of the background and less important object textures seem to have been forgotten in the remastering process. Oof, I want to check the dates on some of those condiments. They look left over from 2011. In the end, guys, the original Catherine was already a worthy title. It had an interesting story tied together with satisfying moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, but the overhauls Full Body brings to the table managed to improve the experience in every conceivable way. Even if you already played Catherine back in 2011, maybe especially if you've already played Catherine back in 2011, this title is 100% worth your time. This game is gold. All right, everyone, thanks for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you want to see more videos like it, I got a link up here. I got a whole playlist of kind of entertainment reviews like this. Uh, I need to give a special thank you to my patrons, but especially Sean Van Pelt, been supporting me for so long at one of the higher tiers. You're a champion, man. I appreciate you so much. Just thank you, and thank you, everyone. Uh, if you want to go ahead and subscribe, which you should do, which I think I talked about earlier. Please, please do that. Hit the little bell. You can follow me over on Twitch. We do Twitch streams there. We play Smash Bros together. We do some other stuff. It's a good time. 
Um, yeah, uh, I've got a community Discord too. Yeah, if you want to join us and to hang out in the Discord, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Uh, yeah, I didn't bother writing this part because fucking why, right? Jeez. All right, so I'm tired. It's hot. In the meantime, I guess we're done here.